We need these kind of medical breakthroughs to happen. And luckily, uh, you're going to get to hear about another one. Because there is a med tech startup here in Stockholm called Sigrid Therapeutics. And they've invented or discovered, I don't know how these things work, uh, a new little material, like a particle. A little, little particle. And that particle apparently can be a really, like, good treatment for type 2 diabetes. What? <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, and here to tell us more, we have the co-founder and CEO of Sigrid Pharma, Sigrid Pharma, 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 that's a really hard word. Sigrid, let's just call it that. <laughs> so, and she is an expert at taking scientific research and making it into a commercial success. Here she is, Sana Alimovic. <laughs> Du fick till det till slut. Hi everyone. Wow, so many women. It's uh, pretty humbling. Uh, my name is Anna Laimovic and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Sigrid Therapeutics. And fittingly enough, Sigrid is actually a female Viking name, which means beautiful victory. We are a technology startup with a, a vision to prevent people from developing chronic lifestyle diseases, such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. And I'm here today to share some thoughts as to why prevention is more important than ever. And I will actually begin with a pretty personal story of mine. So this is my father. When he was in his 30s, he was told by the doctors that uh, he was at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. How many of you in the audience know what type 2 diabetes is? Actually, that's pretty good. That's a lot of you. <laughs> but basically, for those who don't know, it's when you have excess sugar in your bloodstream, which uh, damages your nerve cells and your uh, tissues and your organs. Ultimately, if you don't do anything about it to control your blood sugar, you will end up either with heart disease, stroke, amputations, or even going blind. And at that point in time, uh, my father was told that we don't have anything to give you, the doctor said, so they just merely sent him home and told him to live more healthier. Seven years later, my father was back at the doctor's office but this time, the verdict was another. He had developed full-blown type 2 diabetes. And suddenly, the doctor goes, now we have tons of medicines and injections to give you. Right? And uh, I, I, I think for me, it's like th this is backwards. Because we spend more resources managing our chronic diseases and actually preventing them. So. Um, I discovered that my father is actually not alone. More than half of the world's population, almost 4 billion people worldwide, are actually managing and living with chronic diseases. And over 70% of our healthcare expenditure goes to these type of preventable uh, diseases. And I mean, it's like a ticking public healthcare bomb which is not sustainable in the long run. So a lot of people ask me, well, you know, diabetes, but what are all some other of these uh, chronic diseases? Uh, cancer is to one extent. Yes, it's a lot of genetics. It's genetics in, in, uh, in everything. But a lot of cancers can be avoided with a healthier lifestyle. Mental disorders, depression, heart disease, and so on. And the thing is that all of them are actually increasing in the next decade, unless we do something. So, uh, what is it that we need to do? Uh, it's pretty simple, right? We all need, I mean, we all know what we need to do. And it's actually very cost efficient. We need to uh, eat more healthily, eat your greens. We need to exercise more. We need to stress less. Um, and uh, we need to sleep more. Still, 90% of people fail at implementing a healthier lifestyle and go on to develop a chronic disease. 
So we can't just dismiss as, you know, four billion people on Earth as being lazy, right? So why is this the case? Well, uh, let's just say biologically, from a biological perspective, our bodies, our minds are not geared to live in this type of environment that we have created for ourselves. We are basically stone age hunters and gatherers. Uh, we're used, uh, our bodies are used to store excess fat and calories. Uh, we're used to fighting dangerous animals in the savanna, and we're used to going weeks or months without food. So if you take that Stone Age person and you place that person in an environment where we're constantly tempted to eat um, unhealthy, where we have technological inputs and we, very, and we get too little movement, we are almost hardwired to fail. And you can say like that it's possible to um, uh, take the person out of Stone Age, but you can't take Stone Age out of the person. Uh, but um, I feel a bit like uh, both me and the previous ladies are all about doomsday, and that's not the case. So there are positive trends, there are movements, there are people trying to make a change, and I'm going to spend a couple of slides at least telling you about some of the positive changes that make me excited, that there's a cultural shift. So first of all, you being in tech, you know already that there are so many tools available uh, from Fitbit to smartwatches to uh, uh, glucose patches, uh, continuous glucose monitoring, uh, which is actually able to uh, help us change our lifestyles. Um, and two of my favorites is actually Noom and Lark, two American companies. American companies are really leading the digital um, healthcare services solution when it comes to uh, preventive disease. Um, and what they do is they use AI and psychology to actually induce behavioral change. And they have helped hundreds of thousands of people globally. The problem is, though, that our healthcare system is still conservative, and these tools are not as readily available and always affordable to the majority of people who need them. So our healthcare system needs to be much more progressive in actually promoting and embracing these type of uh, technologies. Then we have another of my favorites, which I hope to see more of in the future, tougher regulations. And I've decided to take two countries here. One is Mexico, because after US, Mexico is the fattest country in the world. Every third child and adult in Mexico suffers from obesity. And the authorities in Mexico realize that, you know, uh, we can't, we will, we will corrupt the nation. So we have to do something. And actually, in February this year, they uh, uh, imposed one of the stricter um, food regulatory laws um, worldwide, which is uh, introducing warning black boxes on foods that are deemed as having excess sugar or saturated fats. But we don't have to go to another continent to find this type of regulation. This is Europe. Uh, in our neighboring country, Norway, uh, they've had a sugar tax since 1922. And a couple of years ago, they also introduced a tax on confectionery, uh, candies, Lusvig's goodies, uh, as well as soft drinks. And they are seeing the lowest sugar consumption they've seen in, yeah, 44 years. F finally, there's also, uh, when you have a vacuum, uh, and the healthcare society is not working preventatively, other players emerge. And this is also something, if you're looking to start a company within healthcare, they might actually be your customers, the companies. Because companies are realizing that healthier employers are more effective, more productive, they are more focused, they are more creative, and they're actually more pleasant to deal with at work. So we are seeing everywhere from Japan to US where uh, they are actually paying you if you can uh, if you sleep more. So they have Fitbits and they connect this to uh, the company wellness platform, uh, and they uh, they they track your sleep. And if you have slept seven hours for five consecutive days, you will get a bonus. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> And finally, what are we at Sigrin doing then? So we have developed a completely new material based on silica, which is one of the most common minerals on Earth. Uh, and it's also safe. 
And what we've done is we basically engineered this particle so it, using nanotechnology. So it has pores, which um, when you eat it, it comes into your gut. It's basically a white powder, which you dissolve in a glass of water or sprinkle over your food. And inside your gut, it targets digestive enzymes, amylase and lipases. And by, by doing that, it uh, slows down your digestion of food. So basically, it slows down your blood sugar, it uh, slows down your body fat and your bad cholesterol. And clinical studies, studies in humans with this product shows that in only three months, we are able to reduce the risk of diabetes with 31%. It's been seven years of development within a company and over 10 years, if you look at the research that my co-founder did, a professor in physiology at Stockholm University, and we still have two more years before we're on the market. So it's a long journey, I can tell you that. <laughs> yes, and so to sum it up, science and technology have greatly extended uh, human life expectancy. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Nature wants five of your ch children, seven children dead. It wants you dead by 50. Everything better than that is given to you by science and technology. So, so yes, we live longer. That's wonderful. But we're also finding ourselves living longer only to spend more time managing chronic lifestyle diseases. A bit ironic, right? So my, my dream and my passion is to see as many people embrace this new uh, cultural shift from treatment to prevention. And also, I hope that you women here take your tech savviness and your drive into making us not only living longer, but also healthier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.